The following game has been rated T for Teen by the ESRB for Fantasy Violence, Mild Language, and Drug References. That means anyone under the age of 13 should not be watching this video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations. I am Outlier and I bid you welcome uh, to this channel. Joining me today is, of course, my usual co hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today we are going to be returning back to Starpoint Gemini Warlords. So the premise of the Starpoint Gemini series is that you are a starship captain doing starship things in a remote-ish uh, star system known as Gemini. Well, that's because I don't actually know where the Gemini system is in relation to the rest of what I guess passes for civilized space, uh, but it is considered remote because back centuries, millennia, I'm not quite exactly that certain the timetable, but back in the pregame history, the citizens and residents of Gemini fought a war against their uh, imperial overlords, the Earth Empire, and uh, at some point someone used reality-bending weapons to essentially sever the whole of the system off from the rest of everywhere else, so... Well, I'm sure you could get to the Gemini system through conventional drives in a few hundred thousand years. Uh, whatever they use, whatever wormhole technology they use for faster than light travel, you can't get to Gemini. Or at least it couldn't, because I believe in the second game, uh, Starpoint Gemini 2, uh, you were able to reactivate the wormhole passageway gateway network thingy uh, to reconnect to Earth. And, um, turns out Earth was being attacked by an alien horde, uh, which I guess destroyed Earth, because, uh, the only mention that the Empire is still around is, uh, through a splinter collection cell group of old Earth Empire remnants that managed to escape to Gemini before they resealed the wormhole. And, uh, this remnant splinter faction of the Earth Empire is settled on a, uh, remote planet known as Phaneros, uh, of which your character in this game is a part of, and they also rebranded their splinter group to the Solari Concord. Now, what makes Starpoint Gemini Warlord separate from any of the other games? No, you're still that. You still do uh, starship things as a starship captain, but in addition to that, there's also a real-time strategy element tied to the game. So while you can uh, fight every battle uh, personally and command your uh, your ship from the front line, being the sole 
weapons platform for your side in the battle, duking it out against hordes of enemy forces, uh, you don't fa have to. And in fact, uh, in certain ways, you actually can't because the enemy outnumbers you by, well, an untold amount, if, especially if you're fighting alone. Uh, so you're actually required to a certain extent to build AI-controlled fleets to essentially follow you around and uh, help with the heavy lifting. And if you really want to get into the whole uh, system spanning war effort, you can build said AI controlled fleets and just send them off on their lonesome to uh, fight your battles for you. Although that can get dicey because it's, as far as I know, the game isn't as advanced to actually model the combat. It just basically takes uh, numbers from one side, fits them against numbers from the other side, and fights via spreadsheet. So basically the largest, most powerful stack of stuff wins. Which is probably how it would work when you're playing, but there is the human factor involved there. But uh, I digress. And for those who haven't seen any of the prior episodes, as I said at the beginning of the introduction for this episode, uh, you're part of a group known as the Solaric Concord, which is a former Earth Empire faction. And you spend most of the campaign, or at least most of the standard campaign, I should say, uh, basically trying to win over friends and gain support with the rest of the Solari system. Because the Earth, Old Earth Empire is still considered the greatest threat to the Gemini system, so you're kind of looked on with a uh, mix of disdain and would-be somewhat conquerors. But uh, stuff happens, you get betrayed, by both friend and enemy quite a bit because uh, much like real world politics people are gullible and uh, they want to believe a pipe dream and uh, then somebody well basically shuts off the valve that connects the pipe to the dream but uh, stuff happens and uh, we build a massive planet killing weapon which promptly gets stolen so we steal it back and uh, the primary campaign ends but as soon as the primary campaign ends, uh, we get word from a location known as the Star Point, which is the uh, star system to star system gateway, which apparently was shut down at some point. But apparently somebody tried to turn it back on, so we go and investigate. Uh, we get jumped by the System Worlds Alliance, which is apparently this big and powerful faction, which up until that point I've never really heard of. But apparently they're here and they're powerful and they're well respected, which is what I get for not exploring the entirety of the map, uh, just going from story mission to story mission. But uh, they try to attack us because they see us as a threat, and uh, somehow the star point actually turns on and a massive, massive vessel uh, comes through carrying the, well, self-proclaimed Emperor of Gemini. Up until this point, I didn't even know Gemini had an Emperor, I just thought it was a... Uh, loose confederation slash spattering of somewhat friendly but uh, interwarring factions. But uh, he shows up, the CWA flees uh, with their tail between the legs almost instantaneously, and uh, we get recruited by his forces to help him reconquer his old territory, and we do that through a series of episodes and gaining more and powerful and bigger ships, uh, as does our enemies. And for those who haven't seen last episode, we managed to conquer the planet that the Emperor wants us to conquer. But uh, in the process of it, the CWA reveals uh, several key facts. The fact that they not only have one massive Titan-class vessel, which is what the super massive ginormous uh, ships are called, uh, they actually have two, and while we managed to take one from them, they also revealed that they took apart the Star Point and uh, used the materials from the Star Point to actually build one of their two Titans. And uh, this depresses the Emperor because all of his forces and his family and all of his supporters aren't actually in Gemini. They are back from in wherever he came from, uh, which he can only get back to because they turned off the doorway. Now, we did capture the Titan that they uh, built using the parts from the Star Point, and I question why we can't just take apart the Titan and just reassemble the Star Point. But apparently, uh, in this game, you don't really build much of anything. It's just basically, you find an old broken derelict filled with ancient and old technology, uh, you take it apart for parts, and then use those parts to build something else. So it's more recycling than it is just general construction. 
And so the Empress linked off all depressed and asked that we give him a few days. Now, I'm not quite certain exactly how fast time passes, but given the fact that uh, the passive income that gets generated from your faction's uh, holdings in-game uh, is considered weekly income, and it occurs probably around, I want to say, every 15 minutes, uh, it does make you think as to how quickly time actually passes, and how long we've actually been off in space, and doing the whole uh, Starship Warlord thing. But that's right where I left it off at, and I haven't really been playing much of it, well, any of this game, truth be told, in between episodes, so that's right where I'm going to be picking it back up from. Uh, and with all of that out of the way, all that's left to say is that this game is, of course, made by... Thank you again. And uh, that being said, let us begin. Alright, so here we are in... Uh, well, to be fair, I don't actually remember where we are. We are... I would say we're down here, but uh, that's only because the mouse was at the bottom of the screen and just started scrolling down. So we are here by Nyx. This is the planet that the Emperor wanted us to take. And uh, this is our ship, the Titan class... Uh, I believe it's called, well, originally called the Juggernaut. I'm fairly certain I uh, renamed it something else. I think Cheesecake. Because I like naming things after baked goods. Deal with it. So, we left off just having taken Nyx, and uh, the Emperor wants some alone time, and uh, the Emperor is up here having his alone time. Now, we did lose several vessels, most notably one of our War Masters, an NPC... Uh, unit, which has their own leveling scheme and experience. Uh, her name is Tara Hicks, and, uh, or Higgs, I should say. Tara Higgs. Her name is Tara Higgs. Read what's there for. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, her ship got broken, and, uh, I'm in the process of replacing it, because the War Masters are some of the most powerful units in the game, and, uh, I like keeping them all relatively equal in terms of experience and leveling. And uh, I can't do that if I go off the battle with only two of the three that I have access to right now. And uh, leaving the third one, well, back behind waiting for their ship to, re to be rebuilt. So I gotta wait for them to get uh, a new ship. This is another one. This one, uh, another War Master, I should say. Her name is Nika. And uh, she pilots a Dreadnought, whereas Higgs is supposed to be uh, piloting a carrier. I don't quite know what it takes to get them upgraded for, uh, to a new ship. I do believe that it's essentially just a leveling uh, scheme. So they uh, increase in level, they gain a new vessel. Also, the uh, cheesecake that I'm flying uh, isn't fully equipped for battle. I mean, it is quite capable of fighting battles and uh, is, well, comparatively heavily armed to, say, some of the vessels in the fleet, uh, but it is not fully outfitted. Still need to buy quite a few turrets for the thing. So while I wait for Terra and some of the other carriers that got blown up to get replaced, uh, I am going to head back home to Concordia, which is our uh, basically our main base uh, headquarters for the Solari Concord military group. And with the destruction of Fineros, uh, probably the capital of the Concord, truth be told. So this is a uh, jump gate, or a T gate as it's called, and uh, it's basically a means of fixed point fast travel. And since I didn't designate a destination where I wanted to go, it just comes up with this list. So we are going to jump uh, here. As opposed to essentially walking the entire way. And here we are. Yes, I'm well aware that the Titans move at the speed of molasses. Actually, that's not true. Molasses, I'm fairly certain, moves faster. But away we go. Adjusting ship rotation. 
And this right here is Concordia. Hard to see because it's half off screen, but uh, this is Concordia. The Concordia is safe with you at the helm, Captain. Cool. Let's dock. And here we are back home. Now, I like how the bay is able to fit every size of vessel. Uh, even the ones that weren't actually invented yet. Yeah, it's just the same size backdrop. We might get slightly... I'm sorry, I'm just reading the ticker up here. Okay. I mean, I guess it's just mostly background information. Although sometimes it mentions uh, some of the stuff that you've done. Uh, so if I go to Dry Dock, I think it is. Go to Loadout. Uh, you can see that I have... Uh, well, I basically... 25 turrets out of a total of... 40 so I mean I have enough to get some turrets so if I just increase the number for the side turrets they are 250 a piece so well, 2.5 million a piece I've been trying to say so uh, they take quite a bit of money and I can actually purchase an extra turrets but uh, I like keeping everything even and um, the back turrets are at maximum, so if I want, say, another round of turrets for the vessel, it's basically 7.5 million uh, each, well, for each increase of turrets. I mean, I can buy them individually. In fact, I could probably just simply sell off all the turrets that I have, max out one uh, f facing or a side of the vessel, and then just keep going around and around until eventually I get all of the... Um, turrets built. Also, I don't have very many fighters. I mean, this vessel can carry up to three wings of fighters, and I only have, well, the one. Of course, fighters are actually expensive, especially the high-end ones. I mean, the Mediator alone is eight million. The Bonson, or Bosun, class bomber, is uh, nine million. I just don't have that right now. I can get a unit of Cobras, or a wing of Cobras. My one thought now that I have the ability to actually field multiple wings of fighters to have one of each kind. So I'm assuming the fighter is the air superiority one, where it's basically uh, a general fighter, good against most things, but not really, um, you know, excels at anything. Bombers are essentially your glass cannons, which deal out a lot of damage against larger vessels, but don't really, uh, can't really take a beating and fall victim to uh, smaller attack craft. Whereas the interceptors are essentially the opposite from the bomber, where they are designed and intended to take out these smaller craft, you know, other fighters, uh, gunships, the like, uh, but can't really do much against something the size of, say, a Titan. And I don't have any spare fighters. But, as usual, I need coin um, to, well, get anything and everything and anything. So, if we look at the jobs board, um, I have various jobs, including this destruction mission, which uh, is... Looks like the one that's paying the highest, so I'm going to take this one. We're good to go. Commission is giving us the green light. Which has the added benefit of, unlike, say, other ones where it's just basically show up and kill this specific target or defend this specific target or do this specific thing, destruction missions are basically show up and break as much as you can. The only problem is, is there's a lot... Will you stop running into my vessel? Or Concordia. I swear, the AI pilots are, well, stupid. 
anyway, as I was saying, uh, destruction missions are basically show up and break as much stuff as humanly possible. And if we manage to break everything, then we get a ridiculously large amount of payout. Problem is, there's a lot of stuff to break, and a lot of that stuff fights back. So, uh, it's a rather dangerous style uh, type of mission. But, I have a fleet, and uh, hopefully... I won't lose more of the fleet trying to waste time and get cash while I wait for the rest of the fleet that's currently being built to be built. I mean, at the start of this, uh, Higgs's Borealis carrier was at, I think, 21% uh, construction. Now it's at 67.2. And it doesn't progress while I stare at the construction screen. So, uh, we just keep moving on. And here we are. Like I said, quite a bit of things to destroy. Uh, there's also an anomaly here. So the anomalies are... Let's just uh, deploy the fighters All wings launch as soon as ready. I hope your cargo hold has room for my missile. Uh, I don't actually know. Roger right, that. and I should and probably set the turrets to auto-fire. That way, you know, they actually shoot at things. I'll go out with a bag. Enemy down. Okay, I basically watered into the entire enemy fleet alone, and one shield dropped to almost half power, so... Juggernaut, well, the Titan classes are big, powerful, and, uh, slow. If you had any brains in that head of yours, you wouldn't have done that. Target maybe, maybe not. Can I actually, I can actually take justice for boarding that. I never remember the can or not. I'd say that sounds fair, but uh, good luck with it. Alright, and I have enough Marines to basically capture the, uh, guaranteed to capture the Philadelphia Plus Frigate. And apparently it's not a frigate I have for, uh, for construction. So, when I take a vessel for boarding action like this, I can salvage for parts with Netsmoo materials. I can uh, send it to headquarters and make it ready to serve the fleet, which costs me materials, but turns into an AI controlled vessel. I can put it in my garage, which I have to pay credits for repair costs, which basically allows it to become a piloted vessel, means essentially I can fly it. Or I can sell it and transfer the credits to my account, which basically nets me cash. Or I can send the hull to headquarters for research to allow construction, which basically means that they take it apart, they look at it, they figure out how to build more, and then I can build more. So let's go do that because I like doing that. Enemy down. You cannot run. I mean, we can. That is an option. Field charging up. All right, accidentally cloaked the vessel. Did not mean to do that. Roger that. Commencing automated firing sequence. All right, and the Marines are well. I have a cooldown time, so I can't board say this dreadnought because we just up and stole a uh, Philadelphia class frigate. What I can do is roll the vessel so that way the shields that aren't half dead are uh, facing the enemy. At least try to. It turns out I basically try to uh, move on three axes at once and end up facing in the opposite, completely wrong direction and uh, traveling away from my target. So there's that.
Hostile target eliminated. Looks like most of my fighters are dead. Oh, That is not my problem. get kind of a first person view makes it easier to see what I'm targeting because dreadnoughts are massive. Not dreadnoughts, titans are massive. I mean dreadnoughts are massive. So I'm probably trying to figure out what I'm shooting at uh, to begin with. Now, that's subway engines. That's all stop. I mean a lot of the times with the larger capital vessels they just park it and just shoot everything anyway. Not exactly how I like to uh, do space combat, but I'm weird, so what do I know? Oh, here we go. Just gonna scan this anomaly to make it go away. Right to. Of course, the problem with this view is I can't really see the shield, so I have no idea if the shields are up, running, dead. I honestly cannot tell. Carrier, but I usually don't have enough uh, marines to actually take a carrier. Someone's flying me. Well, was flying me heavy weapons, by the I'm out of fighters now. Alright, that carrier goes away, even if I didn't get a chance to actually see it. And apparently we're also going toe-to-toe -to -toe on the war against the shipping. No more, just didn't fly into it. Not somewhere. All of it. God. This is actually one of mine. That uh, vessel right there. That is definitely one of mine. Now 
There's still a carrier here. Okay. That's how we lose things, like shields. Also, get us moving again. Alright. Just uh, boost the shields. help with shield regeneration. Shield generator here still. What about we take this out? Shoot the platform that's just back at us. Blow that up. I just got a bunch of derelicts I can salvage. Then all is quiet. Alright, since these are derelicts and not fighting back, let's actually just use scavenger swarms on them. Because goodness knows I have a ridiculous large pile of them. To pick up more pirate currency in the form of plasma rifles because every enemy I fight seems to have them and every place I go declares that they are illegal. Not that the local law enforcement will actually stop me or, you know, I'm prohibited from selling them anywhere.
So I think this is the last mission one that I have to salvage or destroy or get rid of. the mission we go up to level 45 and gain 17.5 million credits when it was originally slated to be only like, uh, 5 million I think that's a large part of the reason why I like these destroy everything missions I mean don't get me wrong they're a pain in the butt they're annoying and I lost actually half my uh, carriers, I think. Yeah, I only have three carriers and a Zodiac left. And I was at eight uh, capital ship points. And I have... Well, from the last mission, the Freedom Division is only a cruiser. So uh, the beam battalion is Terra Higgs, a carrier and a cruiser. So I walked in with seven carriers and are now down to three. Oh, that's interesting. I don't actually have enough command points to field all of the carriers. That's why, because I think a few of them are still the Mark 1 Borealises, which require less command points. And I'm replacing them with Mark 2 variants, so... Okay then. I look at the research screen. Infrastructure. Let's start uh, researching junk reclaimer too, just so that way I can continue to upgrade these things. Because uh, for once, I actually have abundant, ridiculously large abundance of materials gas and ore and other resources. It's just money that I'm running low on. Hey, and I finished upgrading a guard, uh, forward outpost to a guard post. I don't remember which one I was doing that with. Uh, apparently that one. So here we are back home. So these are the little po uh, plasma rifles, and apparently I picked up 12 of them. As you can see, I sold everything. But uh, let's just rearm the. Heavy weapons. I want to the same screen. All right, so I have 22 million. So at 2.5 a piece, that's almost 10. Yeah, I can't get three for the 
front one. So it's right now 9, 10, 10, and 6. But uh, one more turret on the sides, and I'll have that at maximum as well. So I really only need to buy one, two, seven more turrets. Yeah, so another 20 million, and I should actually have enough money to finish outfitting this thing. Well, except for the fighters. That will probably take another 20 to 30 million more. Well, they do have another destruction mission out here, although there's also a War Master out here. Although, potential reward at 9 million? Uh, it's a higher recommended level than what my current uh, level is. So I'm guessing that if I try this one, even with the fleet, a lot of us aren't going to be coming back in the same ships that we flew out on. So, since destruction can have a ridiculously large higher payload than uh, the initial one that's listed here, let's go do this Good one. to go. Commission is giving us the green light. Also, since I'm running low on ships for the Honor Armada, uh, let us... Merge all my AI-controlled fleets. get my vessel out of the way and I like having the fleet be called the honor armada so that's what I'm going with if I can remember how to spell armada I think that's how you spell it friendly fleet to show up. Uh, let's say, where's the mission? Guess I'm pointing in the wrong damn, darn direction. Engaging sublight. Anyway, fleet's here, so off we go. And, uh, we finished upgrading Junk Clamor 2. So, if we go back to research and infrastructure, uh, let's go with Gas Collector 2 next. Just, well, because I can. Okay. Where did these guys come from? More importantly, where exactly are they going? Apparently they're following my uh, ship. And they came from who knows where. I mean, I don't recall building a cruiser destroyer frigate, three corvettes, and three gunships. I mean, if they uh, end up actually following me around, they're probably going to get slaughtered relatively quickly. It's the nature of being in a small ship fighting in battles involving, well, massive ships. And here we are. Let's try to board this carrier. 
I don't expect much. Especially with the mid bay that far back. So we're going to hit the bridge with 24 marines, and that gives me a 13% chance of success. And troops have failed to capture the vessel, as I kind of expected. Trying to steal big ships like this is rather, well, difficult. Not impossible, but uh, random number generation generally does not allow it. The nature of how things work. Actually, get more. Target neutralized. Now, look at battleship. Alright, since the fleet's here, let's actually deploy the fighters. They're busy resting. Apparently, I can redeploy the Marines again. Target eliminated. There goes that battleship. And that. I think that was a cruiser. I look at Dreadnought. Yes. Try to send troops over to the Dreadnought. Why? Having the fuck good idea. It seems like a good idea at the time. So they bounce off yet again. Yeah, I'm at 27 troops now and just add weapons control. It's going to take... I'm going to have 9 people left. So let's just try to break their weapons. Any weapons disabled? Okay. So this thing can't shoot back as the game tries to put in a spot where uh, it thinks it can go, but can't. And now it's dead. Next one. You're gone now. You're dead now. Fight with honor, 
No. Plus that I still have all of my fighters. Towards a benefit. And new tasks are available. And Nika goes up a level. We'll get the same exact amount of experience, the exact same amount of time. I won't. I don't even know where that dreadnought is, but suddenly it's dead now. Okay. point out, unlike last time, I still have relatively full shields, as opposed to almost losing a starboard shield a couple times. Once again, in the presence of an anomaly. So I think I've been in the presence of an anomaly, so who knows. away. And was in the port shield this time. Because all of the platforms are still firing their missiles.
platform is dead now. Because it's a swing all the way back around to the port side where the shields are weakest. Because I'm just out of light turret, uh, light weapon, uh, battery power right now. Shield down to 25%, Captain. Hey, yeah, new carrier has been built. Alright, so much for the shields not taking much of a beating. The port shield's down to 25%. Well, they have what? Half a dozen platforms left? Mistaken, I think it was actually the last black.
and there we go. So before I forget, let's actually recall the fighters. Because I still have, what, five derelicts left to destroy? Six derelicts left to destroy. But uh, the battle's over. I have absolutely no idea where this anomaly is. This should be the last derelict now. Oh, there's the anomaly. Just, uh, scan you real quick. Initializing scan. And we get 17.6 million credits. Not certain, but I don't think I actually lost anybody this time. I mean, I did lose a bunch of smaller vessels because the command points are lower, but uh, I didn't lose any super ship uh, capital capacity. And all of my spare Borealises are built, so let's actually just build an extra one. Realigning core 
course. Affirmative. Engage sublight. Another angle from Concord of Concordia. Let's sell off a whole bunch of stuff. I was just gonna say, what's the difference between the Nixian rifles and the plasma rifles, other than you know, plasma rifles being illegal pretty much everywhere? Well, the plasma rifles are commonly found in the hands of security forces all around Germany, as well as unlicensed bounty hunters, whereas Nixian. Uh, rifles or Nixian blaster rifles are the top of the line bounty hunter we bounty hunter's weapon. So, and for maximum efficiency, this expensive rifle is a must-have for any serious mercenary. So, also I picked up somehow combat mix. Um, combat mix have replaced the now outdated tank vehicles with only one crew member needed to control the behemoth, and the unique ability to pass over any terrain with ease. Is the next big thing in ground combat engagements. Also heavy weapons, uh, ATRs, which are all-terrain rovers, a lightweight, versatile vehicle that finds its use in both military and civilian environments. Light armament can be added for extra credits. Not that I can actually use any of these things. You know, that's just random stuff I pick up that I can sell. Which I do. Just to keep the cargo bay empty so that way I can pick up more stuff. Buy more heavy weapons ammo. And I should, I don't know why I left the dry dock, but I should now have enough to be able to afford to uh, max out every turret. Yep. Turrets are now at maximum, and I have 4.5 uh, million credits left to buy things with. And if I want the most expensive bomber out on the market, would be the Boson at 9 million. Those are the most expensive. Interceptor being the Python at 8 million and would need 17 million more. Technically 13 million more. 12 and a half million more. Because, you know, didn't account for what I currently have equipped. Alright, so if I continue to look at the jobs board, uh, the highest paying mission is another destruction mission at 16.1 million credits, but uh, it's got a level 48 recommended level, or recommended level 48, and I am not that high, so it's probably going to be difficult, and even with the ma my entire fleet backing me up, I'm probably still probably going to lose a bunch of people. I should point out that the whole point of doing this isn't so much I lose a bunch of people, but, you know, I waste time building more ships. So I get more people, but, uh, you know, if I have more people than, well, if I lose more ships than I build, then that's not a good thing. But, uh, Every time I have to change the name. The Honor Armada now consists of one Satya Mark II gunship, two Satya Mark II gunships, a Zodiac Mark I cruiser, an Omicron Mark II frigate, a Sigma Mark I destroyer, a Satya Mark I gun, two, several, three, four, four Satya Mark I gunships, a couple more Omicron frigates. A couple of Helion Mark II frigates, one Zodiac Mark II cruiser, one, two, three, four Borealis, Borealis Mark II carriers, and then my three War Masters. I 
There should actually be seven carriers there, so I guess I miscounted somewhere. With one funnel carrier at 20% construction. So. Now, if I want to max out my fleet before I uh, deal with the Emperor and his existential crisis, I need to waste more time. But I need money to get more fighters to fully max out the combat effectiveness of this vessel. Uh, to plane. Uh, that's interesting. I thought that was actually the bottom of Concordia. I guess not. But at the very least, after the spin of several episodes and doing a whole bunch of stuff, uh, I now have all the turrets that I can fit on this vessel on this vessel. So, fighters aside, it's the deadly and upgrades I should, uh, aside, I should say, because I can still buy enhancements for this thing. Uh, this vessel is now a fully combat capable as it's going to get. But as I said, there's still enhancements to buy, uh, more fighters to buy, a whole bunch of stuff to buy, and because it's the biggest, massive, most gigantic vessel on, uh, that flies in the skies of Gemini, everything's going to be expensive, so... I'm going to need a ridiculously pile, large pile amount of credits, which means I either going to have to spend a large amount of time in between episodes uh, getting more credits to upgrade more stuff, uh, just do as I've been doing where I upgrade as I go along with the storyline, or I just ignore it and just continue on with my day. Believe it or not, I'm actually thinking about option 3 would probably be best. Uh, but that is going to be another uh, issue for another day, because I'm going to call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague, and um, have a good day. Also, we're going to have to deal with the Emperor's Existential Crisis next time. Forgot to mention that. Okay.